in the following video, we're going to be addressing Tome in a meta point of perspective. However, in the meta, he is a alright pyro shielder. The only problem is, who really care to have a pyro shielder? Due to internal cooldown, aka ICD, Tome Elemental Burst is unable to apply a lot of pyro in a quick succession, which means that he is not suitable as a power applicator. Furthermore, in this same clip, you'll notice that he has very, very low damage because he has a very, very low scaling on his Elemental Burst. This is also making him not a very good sub DPS either. In the following clip, you can actually also see that Tomo have very, very low personal damage. Here, I'm hitting for about 2,000 to 5,000 on his elemental burst, which is very low considering other sub DPS characters like Xingqiu's or Shaoling can hit for like 10,000 or even more on a single individual hit. On my DPS Toma, currently I have the following start using a Refine 1 in Glyph Lightning on a 4 piece album set and Talon 188. And you can see that even with all of these, my damage is very, very low, especially when considering that putting these artifacts on other characters such as Shang Li will yield much bigger damage result. So, in terms of damage, other character simply does it much better, especially once again Shang Li, who can also use the Ink Glyph Lightning and the Emblem of the Serpent Fate set. Since he doesn't have good personal damage or good power application, the only role that is suitable for him is as a shielder. Moving on with the following Toma, I'm going to be using a Refine 5 Phonius Lens as well as a 4 set Noblest with HP on each main stat, except for the sense which I'll be using Energy Recharge. Currently, I have 220 energy recharge. As it turned out, Toma have very very poor energy generation, but he has a very costly elemental burst at a AD cost. Because of that, you will have to build a significant amount of energy recharge on him. The reason why you need so much energy recharge on Toma is because his shield is dramatically dependent on your elemental burst. Without using your elemental burst, the shield that your elemental skill can provide is very very small and have a very very short duration. So you practically need to have your elemental burst in order to extend the duration of your elemental skills as well as increase the overall total shield size. On top of that, Toma elemental skill generate very little amount of power energy. It only generate 3 to 4 power energy. On a 12 second cooldown, that is extremely little and thus he will need a lot of energy recharge. And here is Toma's shield comparison with other mainstream shield support. Here you can see that his elemental skill is very very small in terms of shield size and you will have to use his elemental burst in order to extend the duration and increase the shield size as I mentioned in earlier ago. Not surprisingly is that Zhongli have a much bigger shield than Toma since Zhongli is the premium 5 star Geo shooter. However, even when compared to Diona, unless you can utilize Toma elemental burst, Diona simply bring a bigger shield on top of all the other utilities she can bring, including healing as well as a lot more crowd energy and overall longer shield duration. So unless you can properly proc Toma elemental burst, Diona is going to be a better shielder than Toma. Effectively, what this means is that you have to pair Toma with a normal attacking pyro type team, and these are the Luke, Hu Tao, Yomie, Klee, or Yan Fei. However, you will quickly realize that Bennett is a much more suitable choice as a defensive option as well as offensive option for almost all of these characters. I say almost because there is a certain exception and that is Hu Tao who do not want Bennett as much as the other character and would much prefer to have a shield in a comparison to having healing. In my experience, pairing Hu Tao with Toma is a really really good idea since Toma is able to provide a big shield for Hu Tao to use but also provide Pyro Infusion for Kaze to do Pyro Swirl which will in turn let him decrease the Pyro resistance of my enemy as well as increase the pyro damage dealt by my entire party, which again is Hu Tao. My Sing Chu was also able to benefit from the Kazuha, who was able to swirl hydro and give hydro damage bonus, as well as the double pyro resonance that Hu Tao and Toma can provide, which give him 25% extra attack. Overall, it's not just that my Hu Tao got a decent amount of damage boost, my Sing Chu also got a decent damage boost in this party, and overall just did much more damage in comparison to before. 
Of course, when compared to doing Zhongli with a double Geo, this team have much less defensive option as Zhongli simply provide a much much bigger shield. However, in return, you gain a much more offensive power which in my opinion is worth the trade because Abyss is about a timer which means you want all the offensive power that you can possibly get while maintaining a good amount of defensive option which is what exactly Toma does. Unfortunately, however, outside of being a Hu Tao Toma pairing, Toma have very very little use cases outside of this comp, at least in the perspective of a meta. Mihoyo likely designed Toma to be a specific Hu Tao support, similar to how they designed Sara as a Raiden support. Potentially, we'll again see this trend in the future. Maybe with the new Geo characters such as Goro and Ito being physically made for each other. Who knows? When playing with Sucrose in the Hu Tao Toma team, you can do the following in order to get a double sword on your rotation. Start with a Xingqiu's burst and a skills, immediately followed by a Toma skills and then burst, and then you want to switch to Sucrose and do a normal attack followed by your elemental skill which swore both Pyro and Hydro. On the other hand, when playing with Kaza instead, you can do the following in order to get a double sword rotation. Starting with a Singchu's elemental burst and then skills, and then you want to switch to a Homa for a elemental burst, and then finally elemental skills, which apply pyro to the enemy. Do a Kazuya elemental skills to assault the pyro, normal attack twice on Kazuya to apply hydro to the enemy, finally do a elemental burst on Kazuya to swallow the hydro, making your elemental burst also going hydro. Now there's some concern about Toma taking away Fey Price reaction from Hu Tao, and while this can happen, in order to reduce the chances of it happening, which is infrequent, it is more recommended to do N1C instead of N2C when pairing Hu Tao with Toma. This means you apply less pyro application overall, and thus your chances of your Fey Price being stolen away is less. As mentioned earlier, the reason why Toma is not that great with other pyro DPS characters is simply because Bennett is a much better choice. But what if your Bennett is currently occupied on the other side of the party? Well, in this case, putting in Toma as a pyro defensive option is actually not a bad idea. From a meta perspective, there are probably many other much better compositions you could run. However, if you really really want to run your favorite pyro DPS while running Bennett Shangling on the other side for example, then this is something you could do. In other team compositions such as Mel Ganyu or Xiao, the activation requirement on Thomas Elemental Burst is just way too difficult to easily fulfill and just making it overall not really worth it. While you could use 4 power characters together, the loss of an Anemo character into the slot simply hurt too much of your damage and therefore it's just not recommended in the Abyss environment. Likewise, you might want to replace Shanling here instead of an Anemo character, but once again, you will be losing a lot of sub DPS damage and it's just not suitable for the Abyss environment. Building Toma as a shield support is very straightforward, and in terms of mana, there's no reason to build him as a sub DPS or even as a main DPS. In terms of weapon, Phonius Lens is one of the best choice as a 4 star weapon, otherwise you can use the free to play option, Chitin, which effectively reduces his ER requirement by about 20 to 30%. Now of course, if you have a spare Inglet Flight Link to put on your Toma, that is a possibility as well, and it is the best choice weapon because it does have the highest amount of energy recharge. Do remember however is that if your Phonius Lens have low refinement and or you have low critical rate on your Toma, it might be difficult to practice Phonius Lens. Although, do remember as well is that Hu Tao does actually transfer critical rate to the rest of your party, which means the Phonius Lens is not too hard to proc if you have say 20-30% to crit rate on your Toma and you have a high refinement like a R5 Phonius Lens. In terms of artifacts that the Noblest set is a very good set for Toma, giving its entire party a 20% attack boost. Otherwise, the 2 Technosity 2 Emblem is also a great set for Toma, as it provides him with the energy recharge that he needs, as well as a 20% HP boost, further strengthening his shield. Your main set, of course, you want to be HP, HP, and then either energy recharge if you're still missing energy recharge, which will most likely be the case because he is very, very energy hungry and Spear don't have that much energy recharge, or if you really have enough energy recharge, once again, potentially if you're running something like Inkle Flailing, then you can run another HP on your Sands. And of course, 
Look for HP as your main substat and ER as your Finally, secondary substat. For October Constellation, C1 is kind of whatever because the cooldown is not that big of a deal when you're properly playing your entire team. In fact, you bottleneck by seeing just 21 second cooldown regardless. Constellation 2 just extend your elemental burst by 3 seconds for a self explanatory. Kind of whatever as well. However, Constellation 4 is very, very big for Toma. 15 energy is huge for an energy hungry character like Toma, and this will allow you to drop your energy requirement by about 20%, which is very, very big. Finally, Constellation 6 is a nice boost when you're playing Toma with Hu Tao, which is most likely the case as described in this video, as it will increase your Hu Tao charge attack damage and her normal attack damage, so it's basically just more damage for your Hu Tao, and the more damage is always nice to have. Overall, I think Toma is a pretty decent 4 star character in Genshin Impact. While it is true that Toma only works for Hu Tao team, it allows you to bring Sucrose or Castle into those Hu Tao team and thus raise the overall level of a Hu Tao team. If you are a person who have Toma, the chances is that you will also have Hu Tao and you are intending to pair Hu Tao with Toma together as the current only way to get a Toma is through the Hu Tao banner. Of course, unless you are ruling for non-meta reason, in which case those do not contribute to the discussion being described in this video here. Overall, Toma is rather basic as the only thing he do is provide you with a shield and therefore the video is also more basic in comparison to Geno and I apologize for that. With that being said however, I hope to see you all next time as well so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.